In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to get this probe here to go into planetary. More tutorials coming this week, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified when they release. To begin with, I need to grab an additional mod from CCAN, Transfer Window Planner. However, a specific version is required for RSS. I pick up this fork here, which is designed to be used with launches that are not equatorial. Next, I use Transfer Window Planner in the game to find the optimal time to visit Venus or Mars. These are early interplanetary probes, so I won't have the technology to go further. I select Earth as the departure point, pick Mars as my target, and then set the values to have an initial parking orbit of 180 kilometers and an inclination of 28.6, as this is the inclination you get from launching due east of the Cape. On the pork chop plot on the right, I click a section that is dark blue. These are the most efficient trajectories. Going along the x-axis is how far away in time the maneuver is. Going up the y-axis is how long the transit to your destination will take. So I select somewhere as far down as I can, still in the blue, to get a rapid encounter. Once a trajectory is plotted, you can add this to Kerbal Alarm Clock. I know a stock alarm clock is in the game now, but this mod does not work with the stock system, so I'd recommend picking up KAC2. The alarm on KAC will come with all the notes from Transfer Window Planner that you require, but most importantly for us, the Delta V needed and the LAN to launch to. We'll need this when flying to make our transfer burn as efficient as possible. Now to actually build this, I select a probe course set to early interplanetary deep space avionics and place 2000 electric charge inside. With the ability to hibernate using deep space avionics, which drastically reduces power consumption, and placing four solar panels and a small RTG for power generation, this should be more than enough to keep the probe alive on its journey. I then place a Communitron HG61 on on top of a small truss structure. The structure I designed isn't necessary, but I thought it looked nice, and only adds a minuscule amount of mass. I then place a small cylindrical isogrid high pressure tank on top of the probe as an RCS fuel container. Next up is configuring the antenna so I can receive a signal from Mars. I could do another entire tutorial on this screen, but for now, the basics are, I select Venus on the remote body presets, as initially I was going to go there, but the Mars window came first. I drag the DBM slider on the part action window until I get a signal at both minimum and maximum distance, which can be seen at the bottom of the antenna planning screen. I then flick between Mars and Venus to see if I get signal at both. Unfortunately, Mars at its maximum distance from Earth is a little distant. No matter how much power you put in, with early interplanetary communications, it's just too far to talk to. Communication sorted, it's time to focus on power generation. I place four solar panels and then quickly duck out to R&D to pick up the level one tech upgrade, which I forgot to do previously. Tech upgrades for communications and procedural solar panels have to be bought in R&D. It's a little annoying, but remember to do this. If you're struggling with comms and power gain, this might be why. I also place one RTG on the probe. These recently underwent a serious nerf, as this previously would have been more than enough power for this probe for the duration of its mission. But checking Kerbalism electric charge stats with just the RTG present resulted in not very great power gains. I might have to check this in flight at a later point though, as while flying this mission I was gaining more electric charge than was stated in the VAB. After this I place four RCS thrusters for attitude control and some minor course corrections. Set them to HTP and then go crazy with experiments. This probe has nearly everything I've unlocked so far on board. The only experiment missing is the magnetometer, as this is a very heavy science piece and takes 30 days to fully complete. As this is just a flyby, bringing that extra mass for not even the full duration of the experiment seemed a little wasteful, best to save that for orbiters. The probe done, now for the TMI or TVI stage. For this mission I decided to go with an Agena engine with the BA7 config selected. The engine does not require high pressure tanks and also has two ignitions, which I'll need to complete orbit and then perform the interplanetary burn. I shape the balloon tanks above so that the Agena is burning for its rated time of 200 140 seconds, and configure the near-Earth avionics unit on top to control 7.5 tons, more than enough for this entire stage. I keep the antenna on this avionics unit, as the S-band on top of the probe core will be useless in low Earth orbit, having only three sites on Earth to communicate from. Once interplanetary, these three sites, Madrid, Canberra, and the US West Coast, are positioned so that as long as Earth is visible, you should always have a connection. Finally, to finish this craft, I custom make four RCS pods using procedural parts and set them to be HTP, before placing my atlas from my PVG tutorial underneath as the launch vehicle. As previously mentioned, the Agena stage will need to be used to finalise the parking orbit of this probe, but has enough delta V to perform this, and to also cover the interplanetary burn of around 3,600 meters per second, as was discovered on the transfer window planner window. This craft is already available on my Patreon, so if you want to grab this for yourself, go check it out. Now to launch this mission. I time warp ahead to a day before my Mars alarm, and then set MechJeb Ascent guidance to launch to a manual LAN. I change the value in the box to match the ejection LAN from the detail saved on Kerbal Alarm Clock. This theoretically makes it so that when you perform your interplanetary burn, you should only need to burn prograde. I've still yet to see this happen, but it does put you into the best orbit possible to go to your destination. It certainly is much better than my old method of placing the craft into the plane of the moon. The rocket used in this design is quite costly at 7,300 funds, the price you pay for Atlas balloon tanks. However, it is light enough to be launched from the 150 ton launch pad, with the total mass of the vessel falling just shy of 146 tons. The tech I've used for this should be available for when you do start getting to interplanetary missions, especially if you've 
already orbited the moon and done some crewed flights too. The vehicle makes its way to orbit using one of the two ignitions of the Agena to finalize its parking orbit at 180 kilometers. Next up, I select Mars as the target and use the advanced transfer to another planet feature on MechJeb Maneuver Planner to plot out the optimal maneuver to get to the red planet. As this doesn't get quite as close of an encounter as I'd have liked, I play around with Maneuver Node Editor to get a trajectory that will fly by Mars at an altitude of around 150 kilometers. Nice and close. Once I'm happy with this, I use the final ignition on the Agena to perform the burn and end up some ways off my original trajectory. I correct this by using RCS on board the Agena stage to bring down my encounter to about 135 kilometers, almost skipping through the atmosphere there. Then I release the probe and set its orientation to point towards the sun, gaining maximum exposure to sunlight for the solar panels on board to generate the most amount of power they can. To do this, go onto the advanced tab of Smart ASS, select the sun as reference and select down as the direction. Spinning up the craft slightly after performing this will mean the craft maintains its attitude and should remain pointing at the sun for the duration of the trip. I personally followed this mission all the way to Mars, but if you're playing a normal RP1 career, there's a good chance you'll have other missions to fly in between the departure and arrival. In order to make sure your craft gains full electric charge throughout the mission, when leaving it, make sure that the solar panels are pointed towards the sun, as Kerbalism will save the vessel in the state it's at when you return to the space center. When time warping, the deep space avionics on the probe go into hibernation mode, which will drastically reduce the power draw from the probe. It will also do this when leaving the vessel, or alternatively, you can do this yourself by clicking the shutdown avionics button on the action window. Just make sure you remember to turn it back on if you need to make any adjustments. As mentioned in the design, with early interplanetary communications, when Mars is at its most distant, you will not be able to get any signal. This is one reason I picked a speedier transfer here, as the faster I get to Mars, the more chance I'll have of still being in range to Earth to transmit back all the lovely science gained from going into planetary. It also does mean you get that science faster anyway, as you'll be there sooner. Next up, we'll be doing early lunar orbits, before finally moving on to early lunar soft landings at the end of the week. I'd like to give a big thanks to Winterfox and the rest of my members and patrons for their continued support. I've been Karnassa, and I will see you later.